Hi everyone, uh, my name is Aparna. I am a journalist, a travel journalist, a gemologist and a jewelry designer based in India. This is our studio in India. We specialize in gemstones as well as gemstone jewelry which is handcrafted in India. And today specifically I wanted to talk to you about uh, the wonderful world of gemstones. Specifically about uh, Navaratnas or the nine gemstones which correspond to uh, nine precious gemstones that correspond to nine planets in the solar system and uh, which are very very crucial and very important in Indian astrology as well as Indian culture. Um, so um, let's begin with the number nine. Now nine is considered a spiritual number across all cultures across the world not just India. Um, a pregnancy is for nine months. A cat has nine lives and in India we have something called the Nava Rasas. Nava is nine. Rasa means emotions or moods. So we have nine um, emotions which are the basis of all performing arts uh, including theatre in Indian culture. Then we have something called the Nava Grahas. Nava is nine again and Graha is planet. So there are nine planets in the solar system which all humans are a part of and corresponding to those nine Navagrahas or nine planets we have a Nava Ratnas so nine planets nine gemstones Ratnas is gemstones precious gemstones natural and precious so we have the Nava Ratnas which is what I'm going to talk to you about each Nava Ratna corresponds to a planet in the solar system so people, the question that people often ask is uh, what is the difference between Western astrology and Indian astrology? Western astrology you all know zodiac signs and um, some of you might have got your birth chart read um, but you, uh, people want to know what's the difference between Indian and Western astrology. Uh, there are plenty of differences. I'll tell you the most crucial one. Uh, Western astrology follows uh, the sun, Indian astrology follows the moon. Uh, we are a lunar based uh, system of calculating um, um, astrological uh, charts or reading astrological charts. Um, and this is important uh, because sun indicates your personality, moon indicates your mind and your emotions. Now your mind and your emotions obviously fluctuate a lot more on a daily basis than your personality which tends to remain more or less stable. So uh, the Indian system of astrology which is called Vedic astrology. If you don't remember Vedic just remember Indian. Uh, Vedic astrology follows the moon. So it is said to be more accurate and more detailed because it follows the constant fluctuation of your mind and moods uh, that are ruled by the moon. Which is why Indian astrology or Vedic astrology is said to be much more detailed and the calculations are supposed to be slightly more accurate or much more accurate than Western astrology which follows the sun which is more stable. So let's begin. The first planet, technically a star, this is the center of uh, the entire solar system which is the sun and the gemstone that is ruled by the sun is the beautiful ruby. Now this is a... Uh, pinkish toned pink to purplish toned uh, thai ruby with a lovely cross band this is handcrafted and this is a almost a three carat uh, ruby so any gemstone that is recommended should be at least a three carat or more for it to um, to absorb the cosmic rays of the planet that um, that governs it so uh, who is asked to wear uh, the ruby generically if you are not calculating your birth chart specifically on a very general basis Leos uh, if you are born in July because uh, this is the birthstone for July if you are number one so if you are born on the 1st um, the 10th or the 28th of any month uh, that ruby is recommended for you um, so the ruby is um, governed by the sun which is the basic life force. Um, on earth or uh, to all living beings on earth so um, the sun also governs your father so they recommend that you wear a ruby if you want your father's well-being or if you want your relationship with your father to improve they recommend that you wear a ruby 
um, but ruby also this one also gives a lot of vitality so if you're somebody who's very lethargic who's physically weak uh, you recommend it to wear a ruby um, it's also recommended for self-esteem if you have self-esteem issues the sun has zero self-esteem issues <laughs> it's a, it has absolutely no problem it's it knows its place in the solar uh, system it is the head of the solar system so if you have any issues with self-esteem you're recommended to wear a ruby with confidence courage self-esteem any issues wear a ruby um also indicative of the father like i mentioned so ruby is indicative of the father the body organs that the ruby rules that the sun rules um, are the heart the bones and the blood so in ancient india and uh, burma soldiers used to insert uh, rubies inside their skins during war to cure hemorrhages sudden hemorrhages or inflammations so thankfully you don't have to do that you can wear a ring i also have a very nice pair of ruby studs to show you again these are thai rubies you get a lot of thai rubies in the market there are also a lot of african rubies especially the ones from mozambique are of really good quality second only to burma rubies burma rubies are intense red but they are horrendously expensive and also very rare so it's unlikely they're going to lay your hands on a burma ruby we also have rubies in india which are very good quality with a purplish overtone so the entire indian subcontinent um, rubies are mined and um, the ruby is governed by the sun which is indicative of your father and the basic life force so wear it for vitality wear it for good health wear it for low blood pressure it's also recommended for low blood pressure so if the sun rules um, the father uh, the moon rules the mother next important extremely important planet is the moon everybody knows the pearls so i'm not going to talk too much about pearls this is a lovely pearl ring it's a cultured pearl so 99 percent of pearls in the commercial market are cultured um, natural pearls are very rare and very expensive uh, the, it's about uh, one in ten thousand oysters will yield a natural pearl so it's very difficult to get a natural pearl but cultured pearls are plenty within cultured pearls you have fresh water and salt water so you have a wide selection in pearls so moon uh, which rules the pearl um, is indicative of your mother it's indicative of your nurturing side um, it's indicative of sun sign cancer uh, numerology number two so you are asked to wear it if you want to um, enhance your nurturing qualities you are also asked to wear it whether you are a man or a woman it doesn't matter uh, to enhance your feminine aspect if you feel that your uh, masculine aspects of your personality are overpowering the feminine aspects like nurturing like um, being receptive to other people's emotions then you are asked to wear a uh, uh, pearl so pearl is indicative pearl is also asked um uh, people are asked to wear a pearl if you suffer from depression um and any mental issues it governs moods um, it's, it's a very powerful force that governs uh, the mind your emotions and your moods which are constantly fluctuating so you're asked to wear um um pearl for mental stability for emotional stability it's a very very important gem the third one the third planet is mars which is um, in greek and roman mythology as well as indian the god of war and the planet of war and the gemstone that it rules is the coral so pearls and corals are not uh, very expensive um although they are natural stones um but the rest of uh, the gemstones are um fall in the precious category they are they are very expensive these are the top 5 precious uh, gemstones and they're fairly expensive uh, though not terribly expensive i say let's on an average you could get a decent 3 uh, carat ruby emerald sapphire for $100 this is a very very average um, this but anything that is lower than let's say uh, $20 or $25 per carat is suspicious like <laughs> especially for precious gemstones um so we're talking currently about mars who should wear coral which is ruled by mars now this is recommended for people who have problem taking action uh, mars is the god of action it's an aggressive male energy sun sign aries and um number 9 so um 
uh, also if you're born, which means if you're born on the 9th or the 18th or the 27th of a month, a uh, coral might be recommended to you. Uh, again, it depends on your individual birth chart. Um, but coral is the planet of action. If sun gives you vitality, energy, coral goads you into acting, into actual action. Just think of the Nike logo. What is the Nike logo? Just do it. Just do it. So that is that is the sphere of mask. You're somebody who makes decisions but can't act on them. Um, this is the gemstone that will be recommended to you because Mars does not think. Mars just acts. So if you have problem taking actions on your decisions or on your thoughts, this is the stone that you're recommended. Please do not wear coral if you're hot tempered. It'll just make the situation worse. Um, please don't wear a coral if you're hot tempered because the people around you will have a tough time then. So we're done with Mars. Uh, the next one and the fastest planet um, in the solar system is uh, Mercury, the planet of communication. Now Mercury, if you want to know how fast Mercury actually is, uh, it takes approximately 88 days to orbit the sun and if you think that's slow then you have to consider Saturn which is the slowest planet. Saturn takes 29 years to complete an orbit of the sun. Mercury does it only in 88 days. It is the fastest planet um, in the solar system and the gemstone that it rules is the beautiful emerald. So uh, Mercury is an important planet in my birth horoscope which is why I've been asked uh, to wear uh, an emerald. Emerald is one of the most uh, precious, rare and expensive gemstones in the world. Like I said, anything below $26 a carat should be a problem area. I mean going into synthetics or not a good quality. An average quality of ruby, emerald, sapphires should uh, cost um, $25 to $30 and above a carat. I'm saying per carat. Um, so this is um, the emerald, a beautiful, one of the most beautiful and adored gemstones in the world, ruled by Mercury. Who is asked to wear it? Generally, uh, sun sign Gemini. It is exalted in Virgo because in Virgo you still have the intelligence of Mercury, but you don't have the scatteredness or the distraction, um, distractedness of um, Gemini. Exalted in Virgo, in uh, in its own sign in Mercury uh, in um, Gemini, um, number five. So if you're born on the fifth, the fourteenth um, of any month, you're asked uh, to wear a Mercury, uh, uh, an emerald. What it indicates is a uh, great communication skills. So it is recommended for people um, who are journalists. Again, a reason I'm wearing it. For journalists, for PR people, for content writers, for writers, in any sort of communications field, it is great for lawyers because it combines intellect as well as speech. So Mercury rules the intellect, speech as well as short term travel as in domestic travel. If you're traveling within the country, that's ruled by Mercury. So it is recommended uh, to all these people. It's also recommended if you're a banker. Great for lawyers, great for PR people, great for journalists and it is improved, um, it is recommended to enhance your mental agility so that you can think on your feet, so you can think first if you're a slow thinker, um, if you feel that you cannot keep up with what others are saying, if your speech is impaired, you're asked uh, to wear um, an emerald and uh, even if all of those don't apply, it's an incredibly beautiful uh, gemstone, one of the most beautiful and adored gemstones in the world, ruled by Mercury, Emerald. After Emerald uh, comes Venus, which is diamond. Everybody knows uh, diamonds, so I'm really not going to show them. And uh, the reason I'm wearing emeralds with diamonds, it's, it's a classic combination astrologically. Mercury and Venus are friends. So it's always recommended if they are strong in your horoscope to wear uh, diamonds and um, emeralds together. They look great and uh, astrologically they're great friends. Mercury and Venus get along very well with each others, with each other. So it's recommended that you wear these two together. Uh, Venus indicates uh, love uh, corresponding to sun sign Taurus um, as well as Libra. It co-rules Taurus and Libra. Number six. So um, it indicates luxury, 
uh, the arts, if you're an artist, uh, if you're into fashion, um, beauty, if you have a salon, if any kind of beauty services, cosmetics, if you deal in any of these, um, diamonds are recommended for you. Again, um, the gemstone indicative of love, so for engagements, um, diamonds are recommended. So anything in the field of love, luxury and the arts, uh, diamond is the stone for you. After diamond, we come to, uh, after Venus, we come to the heaviest planet, the biggest and the heaviest planet in the solar system, that's Jupiter. And the gemstone that is ruled by Jupiter is the incredibly beautiful yellow sapphire. So this is a yellow sapphire from Sri Lanka. It's been mined in Sri Lanka and polished and cut in India. This is almost, almost, I, I'm not really sure, but I think around the 6 carat and uh, both men and women could wear it. So Jupiter is um, indicative sun sign um, Sagittarius number 3. So if you're born in the 3rd, 12th or the 21st of any month, um, Jupiter is for you. It is the planet of luck. It's the planet of expansiveness. If you come to India... Or if you have traveled in India, you will notice that a lot of people wear yellow sapphire. Uh, that is because it brings luck to everybody. It is not, um, it will rarely or never bring bad luck. So often people wear it even without consulting astrologers. Um, it is the planet, uh, Jupiter is the planet of generosity, of expansiveness. Uh, think of, um, think of a Sagittarius, think of a Sagittarius um, person that you know. Or if you're Sagittarius yourself outspoken um, in um, in uh, India we call Jupiter Guru which means teacher so it's indicative of the teaching profession if you're in the teaching profession you might be recommended to wear uh, Jupiter or a yellow sapphire uh, it also brings a lot of luck this is a very very lucky planet so if Jupiter is strong in your horoscope you are a lucky person and to enhance that luck you're asked to wear a yellow sapphire yellow sapphire belonging to Jupiter. Now after Jupiter is um, also a yellow sapphire. Sapphires belong to the same uh, family as ruby uh, which is the corundum family of minerals which is a 9 on the hardness scale on the most hardness scale. Diamond is a 10. So diamonds and sapphires and rubies are some of the hardest and most durable gem gemstones. It's very um, easy to wear them on a daily basis, whether you're wearing them as rings or as pendants. So I had, a, yes, I had a blue sapphire pendant to show you. This is a lovely Sri Lankan blue sapphire that we have set in a pendant that you can wear a chain around your neck all day. It's a very durable stone, just like the ruby. Here is a ruby pendant. And here is a sapphire. This is slightly uh, a lighter colored sapphire. Indians prefer darker colors. But people outside India tend to prefer lighter colors. This is set in white gold. It's a cornflower blue sapphire likely from um, Afghanistan. The Afghanistan Kashmir uh, region produces beautiful sapphires. And some of the best quality of sapphires. So uh, people uh, just uh, as Jupiter is worshipped in India or yellow sapphires are adored in India, people are deathly scared of blue sapphires and that's because it's said to be a negative uh, stone which is completely untrue. It is not negative, it is just that uh, Saturn shows uh, results very late in your life. Saturn is also one of the most powerful planets. So. Uh, in my experience, I've seen that people who wear uh, blue sapphire for an extended period of time in their life, it turns out to be the most prosperous period of their time, whether it's family, whether it's money, business, love, anything. So the most prosperous period of your life, people are recommended to wear the blue sapphire, but then blue sapphire doesn't give instantaneous results. You have to work hard. Saturn is the planet of karma. Saturn is the planet of hard work, of discipline. You're not going to get anything easily in life. You have to work very, very hard. You have to be persistent. Um, it is um, indicative of sun sign Capricorn. So that explains a lot. Also, uh, Koru's um, Aquarius. 
Uh, so you need a lot of concentration if you are a Saturnine personality. But if you are at it, if you keep um, if you keep at it, if you wear a blue sapphire, great results, great success, great fame awaits you. Um, because Saturn gives very late results. Like I said, Mercury takes 88 days to orbit the sun. Saturn takes 29 years to orbit the sun. So typically, um, a Saturn, Saturnine person uh, shows success very late in life. But nonetheless, the blue sapphire, and this is a very blue, saf beautiful blue sapphire pendant that we have in blue sapphire um beads of course you can't wear this on a daily basis but it's one of the most powerful planets in the system and one of the most powerful gemstones in the navaratnas so till now you must be familiar with all the planets that i've spoken about from the sun moon mars venus mercury jupiter and saturn so western indian astrology are parallel till here and then uh, there is a very interesting uh, division. Western astrology goes towards um, Pluto, Neptune and Uranus. And Indian astrology goes towards two planets, which are not technically planets. They are shadow planets. They are called Rahu and Ketu. So I am just going to tell you this really interesting uh, mythological story about how Rahu and Ketu originated in um, Indian astrology and in Indian mythology. So many, many centuries ago, there was this war between um, the gods and the demons. So there was this big war, uh, the gods club and the demons club. And they were fighting. And the, the reason they were fighting was for the nectar of immortality, which was churned from the ocean. So there was this big war between the gods and the demons. And at one point of time, one of the demons disguised himself as a god and went sort of sneaked into the the god camp and tried to drink some of the nectar and uh, lord vishnu uh, realized that uh, here was this person trying to trick the gods so he came with the sudarshan chakra here aware of the weapon of uh, lord vishnu which is a spinning disc so he came and he spun the disc and he cut the demon in half so the head of the demon went to the north the body of the demon went to the south. The head became Rahu, uh, which is, uh, you know, a deity with a body and, um, sorry, with a head and no body. And the headless body became Ketu. So Rahu to the north and Ketu to the south. That's how these two shadow planets originated. Astronomically, if you want to know, um, these are the nodes of the moon. So where the orbits of uh, the sun and the moon intersect, when the sun and moon are moving in the cosmos, where their orbits intersect, the north intersection is Rahu and the south intersection right opposite Rahu is Ketu. Both these are extremely powerful planets um, in Indian astrology and uh, they have very powerful indications. Let's start with Rahu. The gemstone that Rahu rules is this beautiful Hesonite garnet. I don't have a ring. You would set this in a ring. This is from the family of garnets. It's a beautiful cinnamon, um, cinnamon honey color. If you forget cinnamon, you can remember honey. It's a beautiful honey color. Yeah, you can see how the color. You can see that honey tinge in it. It's a wine to honey tinged um, stone. Uh, so um, this is called the Hesonite garnet. It's also called the Gomed in um, Indian astrology. Again, if you come to India, if you've traveled in India, you will find a lot of people wearing these and you'll find a lot of unmarried or single people wearing uh, the gomen. I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, so um, Rahu is corresponds roughly to the sun sign Aquarius. Um, he is a rule breaker. He's a path breaker. He's a rebel. He will not follow anybody's rules. He's extremely powerful, extremely courageous. But he is driven by desire and by greed. He is driven by the desire to acquire things, to own things, to go after the things that he wants or he desires. It's a very selfish, uh, self-driven, uh, self, um, self-centered way of uh, thinking and approach to life. So the... A house in your horoscope wherever Rahu is sitting or wherever Rahu is placed by sitting we mean placed wherever Rahu is placed in your horoscope is 
this the aspect of your life in which you show the most materialistic side of you or the most greedy and the most definitely a high achiever it's not like you're not going to achieve anything you'll achieve great things but it's all driven by this very materialistic um desire to acquire things and uh, the whole reason you'll find unmarried people in india wearing uh, this so for example if rahu is in your is placed in your 7th house in your natal horoscope the 7th house is the house of partnerships specifically marriage so if rahu is sitting there he is going to disrupt he is related to aquarius he is the disruptor he is the rebel there is no way he is going to sit peacefully in your house of marriage which means typically you get married very late in life either in your late 30s 40s 50s whatever it is and even when you're married um it's a very tumultuous it's a very um disruptive kind of partnership this may also indicate other partnerships in life but primarily it is marriage and um so wherever rahu is in your horoscope he will cause disruption and it's driven by the, there's also a very interesting moniker for um rahu he's called the master of illusion so wherever he is in your horoscope there is a sense of you don't know what's happening there's a sense of confusion there is an element of deceit and of trickery so always be aware if um, rahu is sitting in the 7th house of marriage even if you are married there's always an element of deceit or something that is happening that is not very uh, right you get a sense of that and to get uh, to uh, rid yourself of the ill effects of rahu you are recommended to wear this incredibly beautiful stone hesonite garnet or gomet so that is rahu and sitting right opposite rahu rahu is the north node of the moon and uh, ketu is the south node of the moon so if rahu corresponds to uh, roughly to aquarius ketu corresponds to sun sign scorpio it is one of the most powerful planets in indian astrology a lot of indians also don't know about it because it's rarely recommended rahu is definitely recommended more and specifically for marriage reasons so you'll find lots of indians wearing um um a hesonite garnet and wandering around um but um ketu is indicative of spirituality of um isolatedness of a sense of detachment and a sense of liberation from worldly desires there is a line in the bhagavad gita if you've heard of the bhagavad gita it's the spiritual um spiritual scriptures of india and there is a line that says greed anger and desire are the three gates to hell and the beginning to the end or um destruction of your soul so um and rahu is indicative of all those rahu is indicative of your worldly desires of greed just basic human greed ketu is the opposite it represents um represents um detachment isolation so wherever uh, ketu is placed in your chart um it will uh, indicate a sense of detached attitude let's say ketu is placed in the first house which is your house of self how you see self how you how you see yourself your personality if ketu is placed there you are a person who stays away from the world often people who are ruled uh, by ketu are monks they are nuns um they're celibate um they stay away from crowds they literally physically live in isolated places and there is a very spiritual and very detached approach uh, to life which eventually leads to a liberation of the soul but you don't have to get into that you can just remember that's a very detached and um um non materialistic approach to life let's say ketu is placed in your fifth house which is the house of children your attitude towards your children uh, will be you might not have children and if you do your attitude towards them will be very detached you won't be you won't be like you won't have your claws in their life you won't be you won't be terribly interfering you will be like live and let live so ketu is indicative of that and the last of the navratnas ruled by ketu is this beautiful and unusual stone called the cat's eye this is from the chrysoberyl family um to which um alexandrite also belongs this is a beautiful stone called cat's eye it literally looks like a cat's eye 
and one of the properties of the cat's eye is something called chatoyancy which means there is a line in the middle of um, the stone that moves as you move the line i don't think you're going to be able to see it properly but let's try so that line that separates the olive color from the milky color that just keeps moving it's it's really quite beautiful it's a very beautiful stone and you're asked to set this stone and uh, wear it as a ring or as a pendant if you want to um, sort of um, uh, if uh, ketu is very powerful in your horoscope or you want to get over the negative effects of ketu you are recommended to wear the uh, cat's eye chrysoberyl so these are the navaratnas or the nine precious gems that are very important in indian astrology um, so sorry i rushed through it and there was plenty of honking around um so we have just lifted a uh, lockdown so people are really really excited after plenty like this is the fourth lockdown the covid 19 lockdown after which we've lifted so everybody is really excited and on the roads but these are the nine um uh, navaratnas if you want to know more i'll probably try to give a couple of links to a few blogs on a couple of gemstones um if you want to get your um horoscope calculated the in the vedic or in the indian way you can uh, reach out to any indian astrologer or you can um uh, write to me or um you know send a message or um reply in the comments and um even if you don't believe in astrology um these are all rare precious and beautiful uh, gemstones and um, it's wonderful to start exploring these worlds because um they're beautiful um and rare pieces um of um, art and jewelry that uh, you could wear on a daily basis um i hope you enjoyed um this video bye